Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm KHOU 11 meteorologist Tim Pandages, and really for the morning hours and up to early afternoon, expect quiet weather. It's not until, say, after 2 o'clock that we start to see storms developing along a cold front that, for now, is located to the north. In the pre-dawn hours, we did have a few storms moving through areas like San Jacinto over in Apolk with lots of lightning, and that's kind of a preview of what to expect later today, the, the lightning part, because so much humidity in the atmosphere leads to high instability, and that leads to high electrified storm. So much like last week with all of those lightning bolts, in fact, I think there was in a 30 minute time frame, there was like something like 6,000 lightning strikes over a over a small area. Expect similar conditions to that with some strong storms rolling on through the area. The front now to our north, but it'll be begin to build its way south pretty much doing so right now. It's on the move and headed in our direction. But before it gets here, it's going to be a hot and humid day one more time. We'll squeeze one more out. 99 degrees today at Houston, 96 at Conroe, 97 in El Camp, up to 98 in Katy. It'll also be extremely humid out there. High levels of something we call precipitable water. Those are on the order of, say, 1.9 to 2.1 inches. And what that is, precipitable water values, is the measure or of a column of air from the surface all the way up uh, to the jet stream. And then we compress that and squeeze out all the moisture and see what we get. When the atmosphere is very, very moist, <clears throat> you get totals like that that are up to two inches or so. And that basically tells us that the threat is there for storms to use that amount of moisture and rain it all out. Basically, what this front is going to do is squeeze the atmosphere out like a sponge, which is why downpours and rainfall rates will approach one to two inches per hour as we get into the afternoon and evening. So here's the timeline to plan out the rest of your day. Want to do lunch outside or go somewhere for lunch traveling? You're okay. I don't expect really any issues aside from maybe an isolated shower storm, non-severe, not even strong. By 2 p.m., we'll start to watch that front initiate some storm development as it interacts with the daytime heating. The later we go into the afternoon, the more heat there is to work with. So by 2 p.m., we're starting to see the onset of storm developing. Then between 4 and 6, that window opens up for more widespread storms and the front to impact more of an area. The I-10 corridor is what we're talking about. So from Katy over into downtown Houston, the Beltway, um, you know, all the roadways in there, the interstates, all the way out to Mount Bellevue and Baytown, looking at a 4 to 6 p.m. time frame of the first storms rolling through your area, lingering for a while longer. And then by 8 o'clock, that front and the storms with it push towards the coast and breaking out there before moving offshore. But the front isn't going anywhere. It's going to be lingering, which is why our rain chances are going to be sticking around for quite some time. All right, here's how it looks on the mapping now. This is a brand new run of our computer model. It's called the graph model, and we've been comparing our short-term high-resolution models to see if there's been any differences. There have not been very many large differences, just some slight uh, glitches in timing. Overall, it's kind of a wash. It'll be moving through in the same general period. So to the north of the area, here we are at lunchtime, maybe an isolated shower out there. That's about it. The front, the main lifting mechanism is still to our north. Notice here we are at 2 o'clock. That front is starting to dig under that warm, humid air and forcing that warm, humid air to rise forming clouds, and those clouds build until they get to a point that they precipitate. And this is the point where that starts to happen around 2 o'clock, well to our north. Fast forward another couple of hours, we go up to 5 o'clock. So the evening commute now underway, getting through that rush hour time frame. Start and see storms break out ahead of the front, in through Harris County, out into Fort Bend, and farther po points to the west, out through Katy out into Liberty as well. The front itself continues dragging its way southbound. Here we are at 6 o'clock, more storms, more widespread, gusty winds, very heavy blinding downpours, and frequent lightning as well. The front makes it to the coast and then stalls out and stays there for a couple days. Now with the front, this time of the year, lifting that very unstable air mass, the threat's there for some of these storms to go strong or even severe. Main concern is going to be for gusty wind, and that threat is a level one out of a five level system, okay? Brand new update from the Storm Prediction Center. Did expand the coverage of that a little bit, but it's still a level one, so the risk is not extremely high, but it's also not zero. So our concerns, the gusty winds, 40, 50 mile per hour winds certainly could take down some tree limbs, cause some power outages. Large hail, not so much the situation for that or a tornado threat, really. Low risks for that, but street flooding. With the high precipitable water values like we just talked about, that means one to two inch an hour rainfall rates. When you get rates that high, that's when we kind of hit that threshold of overwhelming the storm drainage basin. So that can lead to some brief street flooding. If your area is usually a symptom, that's usually a symptom in your area of heavy rain, you'll likely see that again for this next round coming our way. All right, rainfall totals. Again, heavier downpours could likely see an inch or two more than what's being shown here, and even these are pretty impressive. One, two, three inches 
four inches overall, and that's just up through late tonight, early Friday morning. Remember, that front stalls out and will bring us several more days of rain chances. That's great news because we just got the brand new drought report. I want to start off with last week's drought report showing extensive extreme drought conditions as of the update last week. 818 update, today's update, shows improvements in some spots. And we had expected this because we had rain come onto the picture and that helped to kind of dent at least some drought conditions in some areas. Can't really say much change happened off to the west in areas of exceptional drought, the highest tier of severity, but big improvements in areas like Harris and Montgomery. Last week, Harris County, the entire county was under extreme drought conditions. It's level two severity, highest level two. That's a drop of 64% coverage. Great news. In Montgomery, 0% of the county now experiencing extreme drought. Last week, it was 68% of the county, two-thirds. And Chambers County continues to show improvements. This is like the second week in a row they've shown improvements there. Only 4% of the county extreme drought, 32% drop from last week. So good news there. More rain is on the way, so I expect next week's drought report to be even better in some areas, and hopefully in western spots they can start to improve things a bit too. 100% coverage today as we head through the afternoon with the incoming front. More showers and downpours tomorrow, 70% chance, and then we maintain a 60% chance right up until early next week. In fact, going in the long range, I think we're shifting patterns here and going into more of a wet scenario, a huge difference from where we've been all summer long when it's been extremely dry. Look at this, next 12 days rainfall totals. Really nice to see some significant totals up over four to five inches spread out over 12 days just off towards the west. So that's some good news there. Uh, Kim Castro and I will be in together today at noon with team coverage on this cold front coming on in. We hope to see you on the TV side uh, coming up then.